Ben Horner for Norwich Boxing. First time meeting up with John Faxton. Um, it's been a long time coming. I'm going to start off sort of recent. Yeah. Luke Campbell, in your old division, lost last night, unfortunately. I'm real surprised. Um, they're building him up, Olympic gold medalist. I've got to be honest. Um, I thought he had world class written all over him. I thought he was, as long as they, were, they brought him along slowly and correctly, as Eddie Hearn, I think, would, I thought he was uh, going to go all the way. Someone, and I, I know you've, you've said it a long while now, Liam Walsh. You, yeah. All the time you sort of, any, any way you talk about him is world class, world mm. level. Mm. Um, could be taking that step up to lightweight. Yeah. Do you see the two of them? Maybe mixing in the future, or not now. I think I think he'll now go and rebuild, and uh, Liam will just move on and um, go on to big things. I think Luke Campbell's got a lot to prove now. He's he's got to go back to the gym and look what he don't, did right, but also more or less look what he did wrong and put it right. Um, I was just talking to Graham in in the gym. He said, you know, that Luke Campbell's great, but since he's turned pro, he hasn't changed his trainer. He hasn't changed his training routine, you know, so how is he going to improve? How is he going to mix from an amateur to a professional? And you this know? is coming from someone like yourself. You had your ups and downs in your pro mm -hmm. career. Oh, yeah. So you've been away and we rebuilt yourself. Yeah, so it's oh, listen, it, a defeat doesn't, doesn't destroy your career. A defeat can make you or break it. Um, when I used to get beat, I used to turn around and, and, and think, right, reflect on what I did right but more or less reflect on what I did wrong and put, put right what I did wrong. And um, over 17 years, I finally got it right at, at some points, you know. So, but it's about learning and, and Luke's got to go back, go away and, um, and do that. But Liam Walsh, getting back to Liam Walsh, he'll move on, step ahead and, and I honestly believe he'll, he will end up being the man of the lightweight division. Kev Mitchell's now gone, you know, he got beat last night. Um, you got Corolla, good fighter, good thinking fighter, a bit like Liam. But I think Liam's just a little, just a bit too classy for him. Talking of Corolla, everyone sort of says technically, like you say, technically, in his head, Corolla's got it, everything. Mm, but I think he has. I think Liam is more of an all rounder boxer. I think it'd be a very, very good fight. Um, but obviously, I work with Liam and um, I, I, I know a lot more about Liam. And I honestly really feel he's, um, he's got it. He's a, I tell you what, what Liam's got, he's a thinker. He's a thinker and he's a patient boxer and uh, that goes a long, long way in this game. For many years, you were one of the only British champions in, our, in, the, in the area. Mm -hmm. um, we've now got two working out of the same gym. Mm -hmm. Ryan Walsh fighting again January, first of our title defence. Yeah. What did you make of his, the night he won the belt? And, uh... I thought he won it really comfortably. I honestly thought, um, I, I, was, I was ringside, I was keeping time, and I was, I was shouting to the corner at the time, I was the timekeeper for the corner, and um, then I got a few Texas through, said, oh, the, the commentators had the other guy ahead. And, that, and I, I thought that was a joke, I don't know what, what the commentators were watching. I thought Ryan was in control throughout, he was stronger, he was, he was forcing the fight, and he won that, not a problem. N not, not even an inkle about the, the scorecards. That's just my opinion. But then maybe I'm being a little bit biased. Maybe it was closer than what I thought it was. But I thought Ryan won it very comfortably. Again, someone else who's fought for titles in, in the area, Sam Sexton. Mm -hmm. uh, last night, Anthony Joshua really got tested against Dylan yep. White. Um, stiffened his legs a few times, with body shots, etc. Um, do you see Sam as a possible, possible opponent for either Joshua or even Dylan White? I don't think for Joshua at the minute. It depends. He might he might he might want some quick defence of his British title to to win the Lonsdale belt outright, and and then Sam's definitely in the mix there. But I think realistically, I think you'd go for the Dylan White, maybe a Dylan White fight. I don't. But like I said, boxing's a funny old game. You don't know. You get the call, someone pulls out, Sam's in there. That's why you got to be in the gym all the time. Be consistently in the gym. Make sure you're on on, on your form. So if a fight comes up in one or two weeks. You can take it. You can take these opportunities. Life's full of them. Boxing's full of opportunities. That's where my boxing career started. Scrap Iron Ryan, February the 12th. My, my manager walks in, do you want to fight? February the 13th. Yeah, I'm fighting, I'm fighting. Scrap Iron. 22 fights, 22 wins, 20 wins by knockout. 
I'm fine, I don't care. Because I'm always ready. I was always ready. Took the fight, knocked him out in one round. That's where the opportunities came. That's what springboarded me onto, that's what springboarded me onto, you know, onto the next level where Frank Warren started promoting me. I got the TV deals and everything else, got the big fights. You know, if I hadn't taken that opportunity, who knows where my career would have gone. And Sam's got to do the same thing. Everyone in this gym has got to be ready and willing and able to perform weeks, two weeks, three weeks notice. And that means keeping your weight down. You've sort of half answered something I wasn't going to ask. You said you were always ready, you were always in the gym, ready for next day. Um, something you find here is whether you're injured or not, you always work, you're always in the gym. Like any of the boxers around this area, they're always in the gym, even if they've got a slight injury, they'll work on something else and keep away from the injury. Is that something do you think has been sort of implemented because of what you've done? Maybe, but like, the thing is, that's their job, they're professional boxers. You know, Nathan, he's had an operation, he's, uh, he's, he's in the gym, he's working. You know, he's not at full pelt at the minute and he won't be for a while yet, but he's still in the gym, he's still in the environment. I broke both hands in one fight once. I was out for 10 months. Didn't stop me being in the gym. I put big gloves on, I wrapped my hands, and I just hit the bag softly and, and just kept in the gym, kept in the environment, kept my weight down. Don't stop me running, just because I got broken hands. Didn't stop me running. That's how it goes. There's always a, round, a way round injuries, setbacks. You mentioned it, Nathan Dale. Hmm? Um, in my opinion, sort of very much following in your footsteps as such. I, I, I can see similarities between the two of you. Um, where do you see him going in the new year? It's down to him, I'll be honest. He's a lot more talented boxer than I was. Um, he's just got to be tested in the trenches, you know, and I'm sure he'll come through it. I've seen him in here sparring, um, the likes of Olsigan, the Jill Olsigan, and uh, really put it on him. So I know he's got it, but he's just got to prove it um, come fight night. Um, how far will he go? It's down to him, down to luck, down to opportunities. As I said to you a minute ago, be ready, be willing, be able. Going to the opposite end of the scale, someone who's come through the ranks, not the orthodox way of doing it, you know, not through the amateur ranks, through the unlicensed ranks, and you, you do spend a lot of time, say from Morris. What, 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 what have you got to say about Zafin in the gym, you know? Like, seeing oh, someone come, see, you've got two different, two different types of boxers there. Zafin Morris, Dale. yeah. Zafin Morris, right, come to me many years ago, said I want to be a professional boxer. I said I want to win the lottery. I've got more chance to win the lottery than you have been a professional boxer. He proved me wrong. Um, he is so dedicated. He's, he's like I used to be. Always trying to train, train. He overtrains and exactly what I used to do. He's got to listen more. But I tell you what, after his last performance, I thought his last performance, he was absolutely, he's brilliant. Working the head, working the body, you know, to turn around and say he come from a white collar, he's had, he, he's had hardly no experience. He put on the right performance. And it's not down to me, Graham, Safa, Darren, it's down to himself mainly, but put absolutely dedicating his life, putting himself, getting up, four o'clock in the morning to go running before he do a full day's work, before he comes back to the gym. That's some guy who really wants it. And you know what? And that kid's kind of about everything. He really does deserve it. I give him such a hard time and wind him up. But I tell you what, I'm really proud of him, um, how he's gone about it, but I just won't tell him. Is it, um, he likes to compete against you? You've had little competitions, you know, he on can't the bikes. He can't compete. Right. When it comes to fitness, <laughs> endurance, he cannot compete. There's only one man in this gym who can compete with me, and that's Liam. End off. I'm in the gym, I'm a gym rat, right? To beat me, I've got a strength of mine, like Liam. Liam's a lot younger, and he's got it. But anyone else, I disagree, no. When it comes to fitness, endurance, strength, no. Sorry, I'm 41 years old and I'll still kick their asses. <laughs> uh, one last thing, and it's something that I like, I bring up with quite a few different people. Mm. Graham Everett is sort of the head man in this gym, you know. Mm. There's going to become a time where he says, right, enough is enough. and he's... He won't. He won't. There we go. He'll, he'll, he'll walk out of this gym. He'll walk out the boxing in a wooden overcoat. There you we know go. what that means. Yeah, there we go. You know, because his life 
is boxing. What he's done, and he does got, he gets hardly any credit for it. He's starting to get it now with Walsh's, but he didn't get much credit for myself. Um, turning me into a British and European champion, you know. But that guy is a real good trainer. But more importantly, he's a passionate trainer. He loves what he do, and you can see it. And, he, what he, and that's it. Yeah. He's one guy who loves his job. That's answered it for me there. That's, that's something I always bring up with many different people, mm. and you've answered it for me there in sort of one sentence, really. There but, you go. Well, brilliant. Thanks for your time, John. No problem. And, uh, Thank you. Catch up with you again soon. Hopefully, uh, see, you, see you back in the ring one day. But, uh, yeah, we shall nah, see. I won't, I'll never <laughs> go back in the ring. Um, I, I, I've got too much to lose.